eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Previously two, on Indians. one. Walking Dead! All right, guys. It is time for the Vlogging Dead. This guy won't go to sleep, so he's staying up past his bedtime. Mm-hmm. So, it's the Bethisode. The Bethisode? Yeah. I just came up with that. The Bethisode that Beth gets save-napped. Yeah, save-napped, uh, as coined on the Talking, Talking Dead. Dead. Um, so, yeah, so it, the episode starts out. Obviously, Beth is waking up in the bed and looking out over the apocalypse that is Atlanta. But that so. she's never seen before because she was trapped on the farm. Well, she starts to be friends with, uh, you know, Dr. Edwards and everything, and she's, you know, trying to trust him and fight, figure out who he is and everything, and then she figures out right away who Don is and Gorman, the pervert. Oh, I'm so glad that, that he was taken in care of the way that he was. That was ingenious of her. Well, we're not even close to I'm that. sorry. Keep going. Edwards takes her up to the roof and is telling her all the stuff that's going on, and, um... And then he tells her to give the dude some medicine and gives him the wrong medicine so that she ends up killing him. Because earlier uh, he did something wrong and Dawn didn't like it and so she slapped Beth because she knew, Dawn knew that it, it would hurt Dr. Edwards if she slapped Beth. So he figures if he has Beth kill the doctor then the consequence is not going to be on him. Right. I think that's exactly how he was thinking because he's all for him. I didn't like the doctor to begin with, just because in in the apocalypse, I mean, The Walking Dead, we've come to learn you, you, that you, you don't, you don't trust, trust anybody. Wimps. No, well, you don't trust the wimps, especially because well, yeah. they always got something to hide, like Gabriel and everything. Well, you, you don't trust anybody because even the popular people or the the strong people, the governor and whatnot, is, is like you, you just don't trust anybody, and especially when you wake up in a weird place and you're being told that you know. You were being attacked by a zombie. We found you. It's like, no, I'm pretty sure that if she had been attacked by a zombie, she would have been finished. It's every other kill by a zombie we've seen is not like, oh, I got you on the ground. Eh, let me sit and there, chill for a couple minutes before I bite you. <laughs> there weren't any zombies where she was because Daryl, when they were in the in that uh, whatever it was, the building that they were in, and Daryl told her to run to the road and he'll meet her there. Um, the zombies weren't there. They were coming in the front door. They weren't out the back by the road. So it, it was them knocking her out and taking her. It wasn't the zombies attacking her. That's a possibility, so knocked, but I mean, zombies out. are everywhere. They could have been there. They could have been there. Yeah, but there. He, he was like 30 seconds behind her. And that's how he saw the car. You know, there was no zombies when he got out there. Okay, true. There was no Good zombies point. when Good she point. was there either. They were out there waiting. And they smashed her over the head and took her took her there. Okay. He took her with him. So do you think Dawn was a part of that party that, that snatched her up? Well, I don't think Dawn was in the car, but probably her goons were. Okay. Which, talking about the goons or whatever, and then, thank God they didn't do any kind of rape thing, because I just think that would be, like, too over the top. <laughs> but it's funny how it's implied during, basically, the whole episode. She was saying that she needs to keep her officers happy, because... Happy officers, you know, do a better job and stuff. Yeah, and she keeps, when she's walking by the rooms initially down the hallway, she sees girls in the rooms and, and they just look at her and they turn their head and close the door, you know, because... Which all, all, almost makes me wonder if Dawn herself didn't do something to further the cause, because it sounds like she would sacrifice herself to, and I say sacrifice, you know, give her body to the no, greater good. I think that she was... Um, she took charge and killed that, that guy um, so that she wouldn't have to um, be raped and be attacked. She's letting all the other girls take the brunt of the men so that she can be protected by the men without okay. having to give it up herself. Okay. I wonder how a hamster tastes. Guinea, <laughs> it's a guinea pig. Oh, hamster, guinea pig. Guinea pig's Small a much rodent. Guinea pigs are much bigger than hamsters. Well, yes. Hamsters true. are like this. Yeah, yeah. Guinea pigs are like this. Yeah, that's true. But guinea pigs squeak. You notice at the top of the building, when they go up to the top of the building, that they've got basically basically the prison. The way that I saw the hospital is I saw it as the prison. There wasn't as much outside area, but they had a garden. They had, I'm not sure if they had breeding water. Breeding some animals. Yeah, they were breeding animals. 
they had a working society, although it might have been, it might have been. How are they getting their electricity? That's what I'd like to know because, I mean, even if I didn't see any generators, and even if they had the generators, where are they getting the gas from? That's true. That's a good point because I was going to point out if you guys look in the hospital up above, you can see lines like they were using extension cords to route power from somewhere else. So that was kind of important, I thought. So the scene where Beth is helping, what's his name? I'm sorry. Noah. Uh, Noah, thank you. Escape. Um, but she gets caught and then she's down on the ground and she actually cracks a smile. Originally, I was thinking, she was thinking that, good, he's gone. You know, I, I at least one of us has, you know, yeah. escaped. She's pleased because one of them got out. Although, the talking head, she said um, something else about... No, um, that she was pleased that he got out and that they don't have any power over her anymore. That was it right there, that they don't have that as much power over her anymore. Although you made the interesting point, why didn't they just scale the side of the building on the outside, but you know, you know whatever. Well, Break yeah. a window or something. I mean, there's got to be a fire escape on the outside of the building. Yeah, something like that. You know, so I mean, why don't they just do that? Yeah, I think Don's just got this um, weird power over people. Um, who was the guy in the photograph? That was Henson, the guy that she killed. The originally, and I think that might have been her husband. The one that was on the table. That's why she yeah. had the. That's why she was so important that he stay alive. No, that, right. that guy was dead. The right. one that was in the picture is the one she killed. No, I'm talking about the guy that they brought in that had fallen from the building. That was the same guy that was in the picture. No. Yeah. No, the guy that they brought in was a doctor. Right. Oh, okay, and that's... The, that was the oncologist. And, okay, and that's why it was so important for her to try and keep him alive. No, she didn't know that he was a doctor. Then why was it so important for her to use all the resources? Because they were having that argument of saying, you don't want me to use the resources on him because, you know, I don't even know the extent of his injuries or whatnot. And she says, use the resources. Why was he so important? Maybe she needed... She felt like she needed another guard. Hmm. But he would have been a strong male when he came back. He didn't look that strong. When he came back and he, he was, was nursed to health. He was chunky and he was hurt. I think the timeline is like overlapping a little bit because I think Daryl came out of the bushes with Noah. And I think that Daryl and Carol ran into Noah on the road and that he told them about the hospital. And he told them who was in there and then they figured out that Beth was in there. And, um, but then he said, well, this crazy person, Dawn, is in charge of the hospital and she's not going to let some strong guy go in there and uh, and break out Beth. And, you know, so they figured Carol could go in there because she's, you know, petite and whatever and nobody thinks she's strong. So she pretends to be injured to get taken to the hospital so that she can get Beth and break the hell out of there. Because I don't think Carol's really hurt. You know, I think she's sneaking in there to help Break up with. That would be a good plot twist. I, I can see that's, that happening. That, that's my thinking, and I haven't read the comics or anything. I just think that that they had met up before. Daryl has Noah. Noah told them all about the hospital and Beth, and they figured that if they send Carol in, that she'll get him out safely. Okay, so that still poses the question: Where is Morgan at? He's still walking around watching everybody because everybody kept saying, I feel like somebody's watching me. I feel like somebody's watching me. Which originally we thought were the people from Terminus because yeah. they were also marking but the trees. But they were over at the school. They weren't watching anybody. So it's Morgan's watching everybody. All right. Because Morgan's, you know, remember Morgan was following the uh, the marks on the trees that Gareth and the group left. Right, right. So, I mean, I know they're doing the whole um, oh, the mission gosh. thing next week, but... Uh, yeah. You know, I know they've got to go back to the church and update what the hell is going on and then have it all fall together. So. Well, I, I think next week is going to be, well, the previews show us, but next week is going to be Abraham and that group and Maggie and Glenn seeing what's going on with them. And all I saw was Abraham hit the, you know, hit the pavement on his knees like, oh my gosh, what just happened? Or, oh my gosh, I killed somebody. Or, oh my gosh, somebody got killed. And, and they that, lost. They had lost a van. They were stuck in some town, and obviously they ran into some kind of bad group because in the preview they showed he was bashing the skull of somebody in with a, with a can of soup. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't like the well, well, Hold on, hold on. Was there a label on it, or are we just assuming it was soup? No. It could be a mystery can. It was just a silver can. <laughs> Guys, if you have any questions or comments on this episode or what's going on, post them down below. Who, who thinks Beth and Carol are going to kick everybody's ass and get the hell out? I do. And who thinks... With the scissors? Okay. And the temple is easier. And who thinks that Carol's actually going to run into trouble because she might actually be hurt and now that Daryl is back at camp he'll be able to tell everybody where they're at and they're all going to bust in there. Oh, yeah. I really think that Carol used herself as bait to get in there so that she could get Beth and get her out. I think that was the whole thing. Maybe her prediction will come true because mine with, you know, mine didn't come true. None of yours have come true. Yeah, no, whatever. <laughs> Alright guys. This guy. <laughs> this girl. Alright guys, happy haunting. See you next week. And uh, stay alive. Don't get dead. That's something. He's looking at me like, what, daddy? <laughs> Who is, <laughs> Who is this guy? Who is this guy? Alright guys, see you next week. Say bye. This is Vincent Embor, a.k.a. Oscar from The Walking Dead. Yo, happy haunting.